Today we'll be looking at the heavy weapon support of the Space Wolves, the veteran Longfangs. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. In today's video on Longfangs, we'll be continuing our Space Wolves series on the channel, and in the video we'll take a look at the data sheet for these guys, any obvious rules, buffs, synergies or combos on the table, and how I would run them in game at the moment. In the background, Longfangs are the long ranged heavy weapon specialist of the Space Wolves, comparable to Devastator squads in other Space Marine chapters. In a typical Space Marine chapter, Space Marines are initially assigned to a Devastator squad following their initial service in the Scout Company. Only after serving with the Devastators and the Assault Squad are they allowed to progress to Tactical Marines. Among the Space Wolves, by contrast, Lehman Russ decreed that his heavy weapon specialists would be only the most seasoned and experienced Marines, the best capable of bearing this powerful war gear into battle and laying down coordinated firepower to destroy enemy targets with a cool and clear head. Thus, by the time that a Space Wolf has been promoted to a Longfang, he has already served for many centuries, and a Canis Helix has had a full amount of time to express itself in their genome, giving them their characteristic elongated canines, grown to their longest and strong enough to dent plasteel. Space Wolf Longfangs are arguably the premier Devastator squad in the galaxy, with few other chapters placing quite as great an emphasis on their important role. So of course the Longfangs are a heavy support choice for Codex Space Wars, and in the pack you get 5 models, 1 Longfang pack leader and 4 Longfangs. Unusually compared with other Devastator squads, it can only include 1 additional Longfang on top of this, but can also include either a Wolfguard pack leader or a Wolfguard Terminator pack leader in addition to this, meaning that you can have a squad of up to 7 models. Each Longfang is armed with a bolt gun, bolt pistol and frag and crack grenades at base, and the Longfang pack leader has a chainsaw on top of this. Any Longfang, but not the pack leader, may take a heavy weapon from the heavy weapons list. And in the Space Wolves Codex, these are heavy bolters, las cannons, missile launchers, multi-melters or plasma cannons, but they aren't permitted to use the grav cannon for some reason, despite it being in the Devastator's box, the main way that you would get Longfangs. For me, the most interesting armaments are the las cannon, missile launcher and plasma cannon. Plasma cannons do tend to have the best damage per point, and they synergize quite well with their fire discipline special rule, which we'll mention in a second, and they cost 16 points meaning that a squad with 4 plasma cannons and a longfang pack leader will cost you 129 points. I did a previous comparison of plasma cannons, missile launchers and las cannons for devastators, and in general the plasma cannons do tend to give you the best bang for your buck, damage for point wise. The missile launchers and las cannons are a little bit better against medium and heavy armour respectively, their main advantage over the plasma cannons being the extra 12 inch range that they get, so they can really happily deploy very far back and hopefully be out of range of most enemy firepower, and just focus on eliminating enemy armoured targets. For me, the heavy bolter just doesn't really do all that much for Space Marine armies on Devastator squads at the moment. In general, we get access to a ton of decent AP bolter fire, and I'm not sure it's going to make the biggest difference in the world having a little bit extra from the Longfang squads. For the multi melter for me, I'd just always rather upgrade to the Las Cannon for the extra range and extra pip of strength. Multi melters are 22 points, and Las Cannons are 25 points, so I'd pretty much always make this upgrade. The Longfang pack leader can take a power weapon and can also interestingly replace his bolt gun with an item from this special weapons list, so that would be a flamer, plasma gun or melter gun. In general, the plasma gun's the only one that I'd really consider for this, seeing as it's actually got a reasonable amount of range, unlike the flamer and melter gun, which have to be right up close, where your longfangs don't want to be. I'm still not necessarily sure that I'd take a plasma gun though, just because longfangs are fairly fragile squads as it is, in general you want a few tanking bodies to be able to die first, before the longfangs with heavy weapons kick the buckets, and the longfang pack leader dying first is actually a fairly reasonable option. The longfangs all have leadership 8 on their profile, so if the pack leader dies then they don't really lose anything, because he only has leadership 8 as well. So I myself will just keep him cheap with a bolter, and fire twice at bolter discipline at anything that's in range, and use him as an extra ablative wound for the heavy weapons. When we come on to Wolfguard pack leaders, you can either take the standard one in power armour, and he can have anything from the melee weapons and the combi weapons list, and can also take a storm shield. Storm Bolt and Storm Shield is a pretty reasonable pickup for him, it'll mean that he'll have a little bit of extra firepower, and if the squad gets targeted by high AP weapons, then he can also try and tank some wounds for them. I'd say Storm Bolt and Storm Shield is pretty much the optimal loadout for the Wolfguard. You could also upgrade him to be a Terminator Wolfguard pack leader, who'd cost 23 points, and you can kind of go two ways with him. You can either use him as an extra heavy weapon by taking a Cyclone Missile Launcher from the Terminator Heavy Weapons list, for which the whole model would be around 60 points for those extra two missile shots, or you could just use him as an absolute tank for your units, again buy him a Storm Bolter and a Storm Shield, and then he can be the first one to take wounds in the unit, meaning that when your opponent starts to shoot the unit, if they have low AP then they can be met by the Terminator's 2 plus save, 
which you might be able to improve even further with cover, or if they start to fire high AP weapons at them, then they'll be able to be met by that Terminator's 3 plus Imbul save. He's a really good little durability boost for the unit. Basically, if I didn't buy him a heavy weapon, then I'd think about removing him first and taking the first bullets on him. If I did buy him that pricey Cyclone missile launcher, then I'd be looking to keep him alive till last, and maybe even have a go at using the Lone Wolf stratagem on him if we get just him left in the squad. Now the long fangs have a couple of special rules, the main one being fire discipline, where at the start of each one of your shooting phases, you can pick one enemy unit on the battlefield, and you can re-roll hit rolls of one for any models in the unit that target the enemy unit that you picked that phase. So basically it's flat re-roll once to hit, provided you target all of your heavy weapons at one unit. It is something that you need to remember to do at the start of the shooting phase though, not just when the unit shoots. They also have the standard Angels of Death rule, for those lovely combat doctrines and bolter discipline for anyone standing still with bolters or storm bolters. And they also mention the Crux Terminatus that the Terminator pack leaders get as basic, where they get a 5 plus invul save. And the fact that they're a mixed unit, meaning that you can't be getting on rhinos and things if you have a Terminator in there. Overall, I think that Longfang is an interesting alternative to Space Marine Devastator squads. They perform a very similar role, and swap out the Signum and Armorium Cherub for Fire Discipline. So a different sort of shooty buff. Let's have a talk about how we can get more out of them on the table then. First of all, it's fairly obvious that they don't really have amazing synergy with the Space Wolves, Hunters Unleashed or Savage Fury buffs to Assault, but it does mean that if the enemy does get very close, then a charge isn't out of the question. If they're just about to be locked up anyway, then getting the first hit on a light enemy unit of infantry might actually be worth it. I would weigh this up against Overwatch though, and as to whether or not the threat that you're charging might just kill them all. In terms of character support, Naturally, Wolf Lords aren't going to be quite as valuable for them, because they already have reroll ones inbuilt, so if you are taking a character to buff them with rerolls, then a Wolf Guard Battle Leader is not a bad choice at all. A big unit armed with Plasma Cannons or Las Cannons could also easily benefit from Chaplain Listeners, such as plus one to hit or plus one to wound, if you do have some Wolf Priests about, and if they fall near any Chapter Ancients, then they can have a go at firing one last time before they die, which is always helpful on big shooty models like Longfangs are. Potentially, you do have the option to use transports for these guys, particularly in combination with their stratagem to ignore penalties, which makes it just a little bit more viable for them to move out of a transport or deploy out of a drop pod if you really want to. But it is a bit of a shame that they lack the gravity amplification stratagem and also the grav cannon, which would be the, probably the most efficient use of them in a drop pod. So in general, unless you're very scared that they're going to get mowed down turn one, I wouldn't typically be too bothered about buying transports for them to try and keep them safe from enemy shooting. In terms of stratagems, Longfangs do have a couple of really useful ones, and in particular the single biggest damage multiplier that they can get is the Wolf's Eye for one command point. This one is Longfang specific, and it basically allows you to reroll all failed hit rolls, or all failed wound rolls for the shooting phase in which you use it. Naturally the wound rolls reroll is going to be far more valuable than the hit rolls reroll, as they already get reroll ones to hit anyway, just by their native ability, and this one really can push them right over the edge when they're targeting things like tough vehicles. Against a typical toughness 8 vehicle, a squad of long fangs with plasma cannons will do an average of around 5 wounds to it. If they deploy this stratagem as well, then they'll get on average about 7 or 8 wounds on it, so it's typically going to be worth 2.5 to 3 wounds on a typical hard target, and that'll go up even more if you, say, have 5 long fangs with heavy weapons, and even more if you also have, say, a Terminator with a Cyclone missile launcher in there. Basically, the more guns in the units, the more efficient that this one will be. It makes them very reliable indeed, and this is a very solid way to convert command points into damage output in-game. The other very useful one is Keen Senses for one command point. This one's the one that allows you to ignore hit roll modifiers when you're firing any weapons in the shooting phase, and that'll include the one for moving and shooting with heavy weapons, as we mentioned earlier. It can be very helpful against things that have stacking minuses to hit though, such as Eldar Flyers, or Chaos with various psychic powers and spells and prayers and things. In particular, the Synergize is great with the Plasma Cannons, as Plasma Cannons really don't want to be minus one to hit, for risk of blowing themselves up. And any turn that you do plan on using this because you're shooting something that's minus to hit, it means that you may as well move the unit as well, as you're essentially getting free movement for absolutely no penalty whatsoever. We do of course have the normal ones in the Hellfire shells and the Flak Missile to be able to stack a few mortal wounds on vehicles and things. I find that these are best if you have a very hard target with high invul saves or very high toughness and it just has a couple of wounds left to stream off the last few wounds. I don't think they're quite as efficient in terms of getting damage output out of them compared with the command point investment, but they're always an option in a pinch if you do need a few clutch mortal wounds. 
We did mention Lone Wolf briefly earlier, but I'll mention it again now, as I think that a long fang Terminator pack leader with a Cyclone missile launcher could be, well, one of the best targets that you could possibly use this on. Terminators are far harder to remove than the rest of the squad, and it's certainly not unreasonable to think that the opponent might be able to wipe out most of the long fang squad, but the Terminator might tank an extra few wounds and stay alive till the end of the phase. For one command point, Lone Wolf will give you an extra couple of wounds and then become a character so you won't be able to target him right at the back of your army, and then that Cyclone missile launcher will go on absolute rage mode, being able to re-roll any failed hit and wound rolls for it for the rest of the game, and you'll even have a storm bolter on top of that doing the same thing at the same time. I think just for this I'd be very tempted to issue any power weapons on a shooty terminator pack leader. I'd take the typhoon missile launcher, storm bolter, and then give him a storm shield as well, just to maximise the chance that he's going to be the last model alive, and then give your opponent the trouble of some unkillable missile launchers on god mode for the rest of the game. If you do happen to have a friendly rune priest nearby, then choose that the slain is quite a powerful option on long fangs, or indeed any long range space wolf units. For two command points, if you have a rune priest nearby, then you can basically intercept any unit that's arriving on the battlefield as reinforcements that's visible to your rune priest. One long fang unit within six inches could be able to just open fire straight away at them. Though they would have a minus one to hit penalty that you wouldn't be able to make better with keen sensors due to it not being your shooting phase. If it's a fragile unit, then it could make all the difference whether or not you get the jump on them by being able to intercept like this. Finally, transhuman physiology from the new Saga of the Beast is an excellent way to try and keep them alive, as the vast majority of weapons that are going to be long range enough to hit them the first turn or two are likely to be heavy weapons, so might well be wounding them on threes and twos, and if you can turn that into force, then they're just not going to take anywhere near as much damage. It is a little pricey though, at two command points. So how would I actually use long fangs in a game of 40k then? As I mentioned previously, my preferred loadouts are the missile launcher, las cannon or plasma cannon. I'd be fairly happy to take either of those in the main majority of the squad, with a slight preference for plasma cannons more than normal, just because of keen senses to get around hit roll modifiers that are so weak to them, and them also having natural re-roll ones built into the unit. Plasma cannon devastators are really quite good points per firepower, and long fangs overcome their main weaknesses. With quite a fragile unit, I will be tempted to buy in an extra long fang, maybe just arm him with a bolter to be another ablative wound, and I typically would choose to include a terminator pack leader as well, either with just a storm bolter and storm shield to provide a durable tank for the unit so we can shelter those plasma cannon devastators from long range firepower for longer, or go completely the other way and give him a cyclone missile launcher, have him add his firepower to the squads as more damage output, and hopefully get lucky and turn him into a lone wolf if they manage to wipe out the rest of the unit but not him. I think my default option for the squad though would probably be to use them as a tank, so my loadout for the squad would be 185 points for a wolf guard terminator with storm bolter and storm shield, bare bones pack leader, and five long fangs toting plasma cannons for extra efficiency when using things like the wolf's eye. I'd want to set this unit up in cover as best I could. If I was going second, you could even think about setting them out of line of sight and just moving up into line of sight, potentially using keen sensors to offset the minus one to hit. If you're using missile launchers or las cannons, then of course it makes more sense to set them up pretty far back and hopefully outrange the majority of enemy firepower with plasma cannons or heavy bolters or something. They're going to be needing to be a little bit further forward in the deployment zone as you don't want them to be out of range of their key targets. If they can be in cover, then that would be great as it would mean that a 2 plus save on a terminator with plus 1 thanks to cover is really hard to shift for any small arms fire. And if you have any buffing characters, then they'd really like to be within 6 inch range of a wolfguard battle leader if they can be. From there it's pretty much point and delete as to the targets that they want, with a strong temptation to use the wolf's eye whenever you want a bit of extra damage output out of the unit, which is going to be extra relevant on the first couple of turns. If you need to redeploy them, then keen senses is always a potential option, though I wouldn't try and do this routinely, as it will drain the command points a bit, which you could use on other things. I also wouldn't completely write off their close combat abilities, they're nothing massively to write home about, but they are still space marines with shock assault and plus one to hit in combat, so in some rare circumstances when you have light infantry infiltration towards your firebase, it might well be the best option. Overall, I do quite like long fangs as a unit. I think having the option for a terminator in there really helped them stand out above and beyond the standard devastator squad, though it is a bit of a shame that they lose access to the Signum and also the Armorium Cherub, which are both great advantages for the standard devastators. In a standard Space Wolf army, they are of course competing against standard firebase elements. Some of the other most efficient Space Marine things are things like Repulsor Executioners, 
Quad Las Cannon Contempt to Mortis Dreadnoughts, Whirlwinds for some Ignore's Line of Sight shooting, that kind of thing. I think they actually do do better than the standard Space Rune Devastator squad at competing with these guys, particularly because of that Wolf's Eye stratagem, which can just make them a ton more efficient in terms of points per damage output. I think they're certainly one of the better firepower options that Space Wolves have, even though Space Wolves are by nature a bit more of a melee army than a shooty one. So let me know your thoughts and opinions on the long fangs down in the comments below. I'd certainly be interested to hear how well Terminator pack leaders do for tanking wounds, and how much damage and difference that Wolf's Eye stratagem makes turn on turn. It'd be good to hear some reports from the front line. If there's any rules that I've got wrong, or any strategies that I've overlooked, then please also let me know. Feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics if you'd like to see more Space Wolves and other 40k content coming over the coming weeks. We have new stuff coming out basically every single day. If you have been enjoying the videos recently, then I do also have a Patreon page, which is what keeps the videos coming from this channel. The link's in the description below, and as well as supporting the creation of new content, you also get to see some new videos early, have the chance to win some models and prize draws, and get to vote in polls for what sort of videos come next on the channel, which I do fairly regularly. If any of that sounds interesting, or you'd just like to help out the channel, then give the link a look, it is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I hope to see you guys in the next episode.